Happy Monday, Calvary. It's Pastor Chad with your word for the day. And as uh, we get started, I'm still in Psalm 139. Uh, and before I share that with you, let me just uh, tell you about an opportunity that you have uh, to celebrate communion this week. Uh, Saturday, August 22nd, 9 to noon at our Sweetwater campus, we're going to be offering communion. I know a lot of you have wanted to take communion, wanted to, to worship. Uh, and so we're going to just open up the, the campus and allow you to come and, and join with us uh, in taking communion. Now, it's going to be uh, an undirected time. Uh, you can just come in, pick up the elements, meditate for a little while, and take communion. About every half an hour, uh, on the hour and half hour, we're going to just share a few devotional thoughts and then go back to uh, some contemplation time and allow you to take communion on your own. So if that's something that interests you and you're uh, in the area, then, then certainly join in with us. Again, that's Saturday the 22nd uh, from 9 to noon at our Sweetwater campus and um, just for a time of celebrating Jesus and his sacrifice for us. So I'm wrapping up Psalm 139. I've been spending a lot of time here because this is a psalm that God really used to speak to me. And, and today I want to just share with you what I think is the hardest thing to do in the Christian walk. And that is to look inside yourself. The psalmist prays this, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any grievous way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. The, the psalmist pauses and invites God to look at his heart, to look at his motives, to look at his mind and his thoughts, and then to point out any of the things that grieve God's heart. That's introspection. That's meditative prayer where you say, God, I need you to tell me who I am. Uh, it's recognizing that I want to be a servant of Christ and I don't measure up. Now, uh, the reason that's so hard is because most of us spend our days and our time looking at other people and judging them. We, we tend to place blame on other people. They're the problem. You're the problem. If they would stop doing this, everything would be okay. If you would stop misbehaving, then our family would be fine. If you would start paying attention to the kids, then our marriage would be fine. All, we we want to blame other people. And the psalmist says, look, if you really want to get in touch with God, if you want to be led in the way everlasting, the journey there begins with you. It begins with me. And so before I intercede for others, before I try to help others grow in their walk with God, I start off by asking God to search me and try me and know my heart and know my mind and see if there's any wicked ways in me and let me know how I need to change so that God can use me to change the world. Uh, that's where this journey begins. It, it's... It, in a sense, it's recognizing, hey, if there's a problem, I'm the problem. Now, I'm not the whole problem. There, there's, you know, other behaviors, other issues that other people have, but I need to look at my life, and I need to identify the selfishness that's in my heart. I need to identify the greed that's in my heart. I need to identify the pride that's in my heart so I can repent of that. Because if I can admit I'm the problem, then I can repent of what I'm doing to contribute to the problems, and when I repent of that, it means that then God can use me to lead the change and be the solution for the problems. Now, I share that with you knowing that I can't change anybody else's behavior. I'm powerless to do that. I can't change anybody else's attitude. I'm powerless to do that. I can't change anybody else's choices. I'm powerless to do that. I only have control over me, my attitude, my thoughts, my choices. But here's the key thing. Am I willing to submit those to God so he can lead me in the way everlasting, so that he can lead me in the life of blessing, so that he can lead me to be a follower of Jesus? It all begins when we earnestly pray, God, search me, know my heart, try me, and know my thoughts. Point them out to me. Because what we're saying is, God, I will repent I will agree with you and I will turn from my wicked ways and I will embrace you and I will follow you and I will allow you to tell me what my attitude should be.
Well, he's already told us that in Philippians 2. Have the same attitude in yourselves, which is also in Christ Jesus. And it goes on to describe him being a servant and thinking of others and humbly submitting himself to God's plan. We say, God, I, I want my, my thoughts to be your thoughts. And he's already told us what that looks like when he said, whatever is true or honorable or pure or right or lovely or of good report, if there's any excellence or anything worthy of praise, think on these things. When we say, God, I, I want you to, to direct my steps and my actions and my choices, and he's already told us what that looks like when he says things like, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God, or, or love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. See, he's already told us what that looks like. But we have to stop being blind to our faults. We have to stop blaming everybody else. And we have to come before God and simply invite him to reveal who we are so that the Holy Spirit of God in us can change us to look like Jesus. Look, you can't follow Jesus and stay the same. So I'm praying today that God would be changing your life and your heart and your attitude and your mind so that he can use you to lead change in your family and at your job and in this community. Because God has great plans for you and for me if we will surrender to him. I, I, I pray that God will bless you and lead you in the way everlasting. Have a great day. God bless.